Crash Studio. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of The Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio. Hope you're doing well. I'm your host, Jeff Lindberg. It's time for another great night. So glad that you're here. I just wanted to make sure that the audio was doing okay and that you can hear me all right. So be sure to leave us a comment. Help us understand if the audio is coming through correctly. We always want to make sure that that is perfect for you all. How's it going? Welcome to tonight's episode. There's a little bit of feedback. Let me fix that for you. We are doing another episode tonight is moving into another episode that we're calling Be Kind to Yourself. You know what I mean? Like we're heading into that direction of this pandemic where we uh, we don't know what side is up, right? And sometimes we need to take care of ourselves first. So tonight, my guest and I are going to make sure that you understand that you've got to take care of yourself as well. So tonight's episode for the Craft Hour is called Be Kind to Yourself. We'll be making another card and introducing you to another amazing designer. All right. Sounds like we have a loud and clear for our camera shot as well as our audio. So without any further ado, let's get trucking with our episode's designer for the evening. You know, the whole point of the Craft Hour is to make sure that you get to have interactions with all of Pink Fresh's amazing designers. So I'm so glad that we have the chance to do that tonight with another Pink Fresh designer. It's my pleasure to welcome our guest all the way from, I don't know where, I should have done my research. Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> That's the first question we'll ask her. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to introduce you to tonight's guest, Miss Shannon Peltier. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm good. so glad to have you. So my goodness, uh, we are already off to the races and I've already messed up. Uh, so where am I calling you? Where are you right now? I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh my goodness. So when you came and we saw each other at Creativation, you didn't have to go very far. No, I did not. I was able to go home and see my kids at the end of the night. It was great. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, I was thinking, when is when did we meet each other for the first time? Do we meet each other in Ohio? Uh, no, I wasn't that at that creative or okay. retreat. Got it. I did not see. So the first time we met was this a year at Creativation. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we had known each other online and we had kind of chatted before. And of course, I'm a huge fan, so it's a big deal to have you on the show tonight. So that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, it was Creativation this year. Always such a great time to meet so many fellow crafters and connect. Shannon, how did you get into uh, crafting and how did you find your way to Pink Fresh Studio? So I have always been a crafter uh, ever since I was little. I even went to college and got a degree in art. And um, but I took kind of a break and I started exploring teaching. And while I was teaching, I was doing more crafts again. And that's when I um, discovered card making and stamping. And I started entering card challenges and learning about the companies. And that's how I kind of started carving my niche was with the challenges. And that's how I kind of got on teams and sure. kind of grew from there. <laughs> we get that question a lot. How do you, you know, get connected as a guest designer? And I always say it's about doing the work first, meaning make the stuff. And then from making the stuff, showcase how much you love companies. And companies are always taking a look at uh, who's using their products. So how did you connect with uh, Kennery and uh, Pink Fresh Studio? I got to know Canary through um, Waffle Flower, which was one of my very first um, design teams that I was ever on. And that's how um, Canary and Nina, the owner of Waffle Flower, are good friends. And they, she introduced me to Canary. And that's kind of how I started to learn about Pink Fresh. And I love, love Pink Fresh the design. I was always a fan of their clean and modern design. Yes, something that drew me to them immediately for sure. So I'm so great, great, uh, grateful that we get to work with them now because everything they do is so great for me. So um, it's a match made in heaven, right? <laughs> so uh, how are you doing in this thing called a pandemic? You're the CEO of your household. You're a mom of two. You've got a husband. You're running a little craft business on the side. And we've got a worldwide pandemic going on. How are you doing about keeping your chin up this whole time? Uh, well, one one thing that's easy for me is I'm very much a homebody. Okay. Always have been. So, I mean, even pre-pandemic, there'd be like a week where I'd never left the house, often where I'd never leave the house. So for that, for me, that's not a big, huge adjustment. The biggest adjustment is just 
not seeing my family as much as I would like to. We used to get together every Sunday and we're just being super cautious right now. So that's the thing that's been the hardest, but I just um, enjoy spending this extra time with my girls. So that's kind of where I'm finding the silver lining in this is just spending more sure. time with and that's a great thing. I call it the silver linings too. I'm trying to make sure that I tell myself amazing things that are still happening. And that's one way we can treat ourselves, right? And we can be kind to ourselves. And so uh, Shannon is a mom of two. Uh, Piper and Everly are a bright part of her life and husband Robert will be talking about them tonight, but we'll also be making tonight. So Shannon, what did you have in store for us to make from Pink Fresh Studios? And we are going to create a colorful card tonight, and we're going to do one of my favorite, favorite stamping techniques, which I think is really simple. It's partial inking, and I, I think it's a good one to do live so you can kind of see it in action. Great. Well, I'm going to take you off camera, mute you, and I'm going to take over the show for a minute while you set up, and then we'll get to card making. Does that sound like a good date? That sounds great. <laughs> all right. Awesome. I'm going to put you on mute, and we'll see you in a second, all right? Awesome. Everyone, again, you're watching and back with me here live. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I'm Jeff Lindbergh. Please make sure you connect with me on Instagram. I would love to interact. This is the Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio. This is where we take guest designers of Pink Fresh Studio, introduce them to each of you. You get to know a little bit more about them, and we make an amazing project. Uh, so tonight, I stripped back a lot of the technology that I had prior uh, in the episode in hopes to give you better content and so microphones wouldn't go out, etc. So please know that we're um, definitely doing this for you and we're listening to your feedback. Leah Lawson, our amazing marketing director, moderates tonight, so be sure to interact with her in the comments. And of course, I will make sure that I put your comments up when we ask our five questions. You know, every hour we make sure that we connect with you uh, via some questions. Tonight's questions are all focused around how you can be kind to yourself during this very unusual time. So I'm super excited to get started. Hey, Miss Shannon, do you think that you're good to go? I'm good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get back over there. This is Shannon's desktop, and then I will show you that I have mine as well. Uh, we uh, are gonna be having a little desktop duel. Let's start with this <laughs> little bit of information. Uh, hey, our friends over at the Stamping Village brought together an amazing array of companies. Um, as you can see, uh, Pink Fresh Studio is joined by a litany of amazing companies and come together through something called the Stamping Village. You can find them online uh, and Instagram as well. But when these companies come together, they're standing together, but they're promoting something called We Stand With You. And so as you saw, today was a big release day. Be sure to check out my feed and others as we um, are excited to share how we all came together providing artwork on this photopolymer stamp. Shannon, did you get one too? You did, look at that. <laughs> are you gonna try to incorporate it into tonight's make? I am, I'm going to incorporate uh, one of these images for sentiments for our kind of our sentiment on the card. Awesome. Well, I'm currently showing a card that we aren't making tonight, but with help of our Pink Fresh Studio line. This is that Chevron and I did it in rainbow colors and I decided to add a little Brutus Monroe gold and I'm using the Concord and Ninth sentiment. It's uh, you didn't matter to me. And uh, that's the one I uh, donated tonight uh, as we uh, stand together, we stand with you. And again, that's certainly helping me through all of this is uh, doing things for others and kind of talking about all the weird social injustices that we as a world need to kind of talk about. So be sure to check that out. You can get that um, at Pink Fresh or all the participating companies. In fact, Leah has already put it up on the screen. All right, but we are going to make something tonight. So, Miss Shannon, we got a lot of colors right off the bat, don't we? Tell yes, us about we them. do. So I'm definitely a fan of color. So we're going to use a lot of colors today to create our card. This is because I'm going to do a rainbow and every color that I'm going to do needs a light and a dark to kind of create that partial inking, that little gradation. So okay. that's why we have so many. So that's definitely um, a little intimidating for me, but I'm going to do it. Do you recommend a uh, smaller mis Misty or the larger one? Forgive me, the smaller one? Great. All right. And so uh, we did a little pre-work beforehand. Show them the die cut that you've already made and why we are needing it tonight. So I'd used the uh, hexa the Simply Hexagon die, and it cuts this beautiful uh, hexagon panel, an A2 panel. And I'm going to use this to help me position 
this corresponding stamp set that works with this set, I'm going to use it to help me position this solid hexagon stamp. So that's why we've die cut this. And we'll also use this later to kind of frame our card and just add a little bit of dimension as well. Will I need any of the negative spaces, my friend? On the stamp set? Yeah, um, yeah, the die cut, do I need to, can I put those to the side? Oh, you can pop those all out, yes, and just put them to the side. Great. I say, we save those. Of um, course, you right? Stamp them later and make a card with those. So let me pull out the stamp set and I'm going to kind of jump right in. And the reason why we have two is we will layer these on top of each, each other for a little bit of dimension. That's the only reason why we have two. So you could save it and just cut one if you don't want to, if you feel like you're wasting paper. So I'm going to grab my little solid hexagon stamp here from this, the pop-out set. And just so I can get ahead a little bit, I'm going to take that solid one like you just mentioned, but you need for me to go ahead and break these apart because later I'll need to not have the sentiment ones in there, right? So pop those out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so later we're going to use the outline. And so all of everything will need to be pulled out of here. But for right now, all I need is that hexagon. Great. Right now, all in one. So I'm going to pop we, those out while you get started and I will catch up. Okay. And while this, because this is a clean stamp set, you'd have to remove your foam or your, um, your grid paper out of your MISTI to use it. And then I'm going to pop in this panel here, the hexagon panel. And then I'm going to use that to help me align the stamp right inside. So you see how I've lined it up there in that opening? And now that's in place. I'll fold my MISTI over, pick it up, and I have my first hexagon positioned. So I'll take the grid, put it aside, and now I'm gonna get what I actually am gonna stamp on, which is an A2 panel of white cardstock. Now here's where we start to do the um, partial inking. So I have two colors picked out, a light and a dark. We're gonna start with the pink and we're gonna start with just the light color. And I'm just gonna simply ink the whole stamp with the light color. So really quick, it, it does not matter that um, we are starting, since it's the same um, geometry. Um, and by the way, do I remove my base? Yes, you no need for the foam. So I'm taking that out, great. A friendly reminder, everybody, our, our, our designers like Shannon never can see what I'm doing unless they are doing a playback. So forgive me if I over um, over explain what you all at home can see very clearly. So because this geometry is the same, I'm going to pull out the foam and um, I was only using this. So I'm now taking out that great catching up to her. I am going to put this back on and that should give me my. Now, do you magnetize? You do magnetize, yep. I because... do. You don't have to, but I do. Great. I'll always check every time before I stamp that the, my panel's back in the corner, even if I use magnets, because it shifts so easily. Great. And what is my first color? I'm so sorry, my friend. That's fine. Uh, sparkling Rose. Got it. So we're using Sparkling Rose first. Great. <clears throat> do you find that you have to double stamp, or are you? is this a single stamp job? I got a good impression the first time I stamped it, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Sometimes I do have to double stamp. I do find the clean rubbers um, get, usually get a good impression the first time. Got it. Well, I have already done it off um, wrong, so you keep going and I'm going to catch <laughs> up to you. <laughs> so now that I've stamped that lighter color, I'm going to move on to my darker color, and this is where the partial inking comes in. So I'm going to hold to partial ink. All it means is we're just going to get a small amount of this color on the stamp. We're not trying to put the whole stamp up with this color. Now, I kind of want my gradation to come in from the left. So I'm closing my misty here real quick just so I can see where that is because it's all like reversed. So I know I want to ink up this corner here. So I kind of left my finger there to keep it straight. And now I know once when my MISTI is opened, I'm always going to ink up the right side, it's basically the opposite. So here I have my ink pad held at an angle. I don't know if I can show it any better. Maybe like this. 
There we go. And I'm just gonna touch just a corner with my ink pad. And what that is, is just gonna ink up a portion of that stamp. And now I'm gonna stamp it. All right, so I'm now catching up with the second color. And like you said, I'm gonna to try to do only a portion of it. Okay, I, I get the technique now. Good. now. Now you're right, you do have to memorize the position that you did your angled restamp of the secondary color. Yeah, if you want to keep your gradation consistent. So now that I've stamped... Shannon, don't we all want to keep our gradation <laughs> consistent? Okay. We're trying to always keep everything consistent, right? Right. So I'm going to pop my grid back on here. I did clean my stamp, so I'm not worrying about getting any ink on my panel. I'm going to position my hexagon again using that grid to help me get it in the right spot. Then I will pick up the stamp. Remove the grid. And now I'm gonna move on to my next color, which is going to be a red. So I'm done with pinks. I'm now moving on to red. And the two colors I'm using for red are Coral Reef and Passion Fruit. And Coral Reef is my light, so I'm starting with that. So I'm always been, I've, I was given feedback even to myself, by the way that I need to make these cards versus just host the show. So I'm, I'm, I don't care if I don't, I'm yes. excited that I am even somewhat close to where you are in the project. <laughs> Great. It's pretty repetitive from now on. Great. So now that I've got to remember again, I always get mixed up. I always have to double check this corner here. This, right. No, no, no. This corner here. There right. we go. Yep. I'm going to clean it just so I don't, cross-contaminate though I'm probably okay and then I'm going to partial ink and I'll try to do it up for the camera so you guys can see again what I love about this technique is it is also um, you know I've always talked to the audience about the fact that I don't feel uber confident with color and um, this uh, demonstration shows me what colors light to dark work well together which is a great um, feeling of confidence when you understand the colors that pink fresh Pink Fresh definitely set us up for success with gradiating and graduating colors. Um, so that it's fun to be able to see how they all work together, right? Mm -hmm. All right. They did. So they really did. I am going to put myself back. So as we truck along, as you know, we always ask five questions. Tonight's questions are all around how to be kinder to yourself. So I'll start with question number one for today. Um, let's see what question number one has in store for us. Question number one says, how have you been kind to yourself recently? Everyone, you know how this goes. We answer the questions as your host and guest designer, and then we turn it over to you. So I'm hoping to see you participate in the comments between Leah and myself. We'll uh, make sure we enjoy uh, it. So think about it for a minute. How have you been kind to yourself recently? Well, I would I would say this 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 is how I'm answering the question, Shannon. I would say that I have decided to try to introduce just something a little more normal every chance I get safely while masked. By the way, um, today I went to Target. I haven't been to Target in over a hundred days. And I just needed that target minute. You know what I mean? Like I needed I needed a little bit of target in my life. So I'm trying to introduce just a little bit of normal. How about you, my friend? What, have, what is something that you've been working with? And really quick, before you answer that question, I noticed that you didn't go to the third spot. How would you like for me to think about uh, color in this? Would you like for me, do you know what I mean? Like instead of going to your right? right? So for here, for so I did two on red, two red on either side of the pink. And then the next color here I'll do is orange. Oh, so got it. Orange okay. Here. So I'm kind of thinking of like a diagonal. Because you're uh, saying we don't have enough color to just keep going. Do you know what I mean? Like, I do need to duplicate the reds then. Yes. yes. Oh, okay, got it. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. All right, Miss Shannon. Uh, everybody is giving their answers. Uh, everybody agrees with Target. 
Uh, D said that she started journaling one line, but she's still proud of herself. Uh, ordering um, scrapbook supplies, bought some new stamps. That's always good. Oh, Natalie's here. Natalie was my host last week with me. Three, three pairs of shoes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Shannon, how about you? Um, I think I'm trying to um, do... I'm trying to get better at doing less. <laughs> okay. So, and, and, and forgiving myself when I don't get as, I don't feel like I've done something to the extent that I normally would. Cause it's just time has seemed so ironically so short right now. It's just, it's harder. It's, it's harder with the girls home. So it's just more to take on, especially when we were doing school, that was really, really a challenge to do all the things that I got done. And I'm taking more time out to exercise, which I wasn't even doing at all before. So that's something I'm doing more just for me. Well, I love that. Sika says that she takes more naps. Carol says that she relaxes, journals, and she signed up for an art class. And of course, she's buying a lot of stamps, which is great. Holly went to the paper source for envelopes today. Ooh. Yeah, introducing a little bit of normal does help a little bit. How did you, um, what did you decide to say? It sounded like you were talking about simplicity, just giving yourself a little bit more simplicity in life. Uh, what did that mean for you? Like, what are some things that you've done to make yourself a little more, a little more simpler? Well, um, if anybody has been following my blog, you for review crazy amount of cards, like usually six to seven cards for a release. And I've just been cutting myself some slack and not, not taking on that, <laughs> that many, that many that I need to make. I'm tr trying to do less. I love it. Um, we need to do at apricot before Clementine, right? Right. That's correct. Okay. Sorry. I'm not narrating very well what I'm doing. That's okay. I am just proud that I am even as far as far along. Those of you who have been to the show every week, you have to be proud of me, right? Like that I am even on my fourth color. Leah uh, is going to be proud of me. I can feel it. <laughs> Ava says, I'm getting together with a uh, few friends outdoors, socially distanced. She just wants to chat and connect, which is so important. You know, it's interesting. I happened to start this little gig of mine that you're watching with Pink Fresh during um, socially distant experiences. So we got used to appearing online more than in person. But Avra is correct. You know, sometimes you need the human connection. Absolutely. So, um, all right. I did those two in orange. Oh, good. You're ahead of me, I think. <laughs> that never happens. Say that I louder. Are, I think you're, you are actually very much ahead of me. <laughs> Say that so that um, uh, Leah can hear it, please. <laughs> that that because that that never happens, which is uh, for sure. It looks so beautiful. Okay, we're doing two. Um, that apricot is appearing in the upper corner. So actually, I'm not ahead of you. I. For, I keep forgetting to do it twice. So let me catch up and do that. This is a this is definitely a fun technique. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. I love it. I think it's a great way to really a, a lot of stamp sets, especially layering stamp sets, will have a solid, and it's a great way to add depth to oops, solid stamp. always have to, this is a... <laughs> yep that's the one thing about this technique is uh remembering where your brain <laughs> oh that hexacon my second orange was a little off shoot meaning i uh did not place it in the misty correctly but still onward we're gonna say onward we're gonna keep trucking along that maybe that will be where you place your sentiment so no one will know I don't know. I don't know, sis. I don't know if that's going to work this time, but we'll see. 
Um, so I learned in our pre-interview that um, your husband has a very interesting job with um, a phenom of a um, corporate identity called Trader Joe's, but it's not just any cool job. Tell everyone what your husband does for Trader Joe's. This is Robert who we're talking about. Yes, my husband is um, a sign artist at Trader Joe's. So if you've ever gone to Trader Joe's, all of the signs are hand drawn. They're either handwritten or they're actual, like when there's chalkboards for like an end cap that will often have like an image and that's hand done, hand painted with chalk or drawn. So he does all that and he's been doing that for years now. <laughs> that's so awesome. And I'm sure there are some style guides that they have to follow, right? Mm -hmm, they have, but it's pretty loose there. It's pretty, um, each store is, has a different, obviously different artist. And it's the captain kind of will let you know if that's okay or not okay. And so, but there's a lot of, uh, I think, um, allowances for some creativity there. Oops. Awesome. So he really enjoys it. He's Remi done like big hippos and he's made some really cool stuff. Remind me where our second yellow is going. It is going, okay, got it. So you are, you're, <laughs> you're <laughs> I just finished that. You're like neck and neck. I'm ignoring the comments though. So everybody, uh, our friend Leo will help moderate just a little bit, but I just want to stay ahead and actually do the project this time. So uh, we'll get to our second question in a while. Uh, so Bruce, Trader Joe, well, we now know that Bruce is not really Bruce. This is, uh, this is his wife joining his account. I used to think it was a dude crafter and got really excited. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, Miss, Miss Bruce, Miss Gordon, uh, Trader Joe's is a popular grocery store chain that is known for uh, providing great brand alternatives at a better quality as well as a different um, level of pricing, but also really gives back to the communities where they are, and they're very popular. They they um, aren't everywhere, though, so I can understand why you don't know them. Do you think I answered that correctly? Is that the right answer about... Yeah, better than me. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes I'll stamp um, like a darker layer twice. You can do like um, twice stamping, double stamping, just in case you want to beef up the, the contrast and make it a more um, bold transition, I guess. Like the yellow, I think I did it twice, but it's not necessary, just in case you want it more contrast. Right. I will say that Pink Fresh Inks gave me a tremendous amount of confidence uh, when it came to uh, feeling like I was stamping uh, well. I don't, I don't think I had a confidence with all inks, and I hadn't um, been able to afford a whole collection. So when I got this job, it was um, a way for me to understand it wasn't just me. Paper quality as well as the quality inks um, definitely help uh, with great results. You know. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Because if you think about it as a first time consumer, I was using um, access to box stores, which definitely um, do have some stamps that we all love, um, but they don't um, specialize perfectly in, um, in that. Shannon, can I see? OK, so the green goes under the other yellow. OK, great. All right, folks, I'm going to come back to me. Let's get question number two out of the atmosphere. It's already 730. My goodness. Boy. Okay. <laughs> what, what food will automatically make you feel better when you need a little more kindness in your own body? Because remember, I firmly believe that if you can't apply oxygen to yourself first, then you're not going to be able to give love out into the world, especially as people as close as your family members are. So uh, what food will automate, automatically make you feel better, Shannon? No, tell just... You go with if the I'm, question the way you want to go with it. Okay. So if I'm going to treat myself, um, I like to have a beer. That's my favorite thing to have. And that's what I'll treat myself to at the end of the day, too. Oh, nice. So is it ales, lagers, a specific type of beer?
Oh my goodness, you are very specific. Where did you fall in love with beers? Like, how did you become um, so cognizant of the specific tastes and knowledge? Awesome. Well, my fellow dude crafter Daniel says tre leches, of course, cake, lots of pasta lovers. Our friend Kathy, who's a longtime fan of the show, Kathy, thank you so much for your nice comments. I saw them earlier. Chili dog for her. Green smoothie for Miss Gordon. I love it. Or some chocolate. Pizza for some. Popcorn. Cherry cheesecake from my buddy Wendy. Oh, gosh, people have a lot of answers here. I've got to get back to my project uh, in order to keep up. But do inks come in cubes? So uh, yes, uh, no, they do not. I'm so sorry. I don't think they do. Leah will help us with that. Um, worth the investment though, I will say. Um, I'm gonna go back down to my desktop and get some greens going. I notice we're on a three with these greens. To, do, to equal it out, we're gonna need to do three, right? Okay. At a diagonal with our, of our rainbow, and that's kind of at a wider point. Okay. Duh, I knew that. I totally knew that. I didn't need your help. I totally got it. <laughs> I know you do. Um, so my treat yourself, what would my treat yourself be? I am a huge um, Sweet Tarts fan. Sweet Tarts and Spree. Oh. So if um, I'm feeling a little down or not feeling well um, when it comes to a cold, I definitely love to have a little spree or a little sweet tart action. And I'm particularly a big fan, this shows that I was born in 1974, of when they had the big sweet tarts that were not chewy. They were um, actually just the same uh, texture as the um, smaller roll candy, and you would just ruin your teeth. And that's weird coming from a family of dentists. But um, gosh, I loved it so much. That's my mom's favorite candy is sweet tarts. Sweet tarts, too? Mm -hmm. She loves them. Oh, Marcy likes them, too. Marcy, I'm so glad you enjoy them. Um, Shannon, I do have to tell you, just seeing uh, this card on camera, it is so photogenic. That's so awesome. Good. So we, we are going to sneak over to get that hexagon that's on the right for that third green which doesn't matter really because if we line it to the bottom, I'm just talking out loud okay. for a little confidence building, right? Um, even though I'm moving it, talk me through that, that that's okay, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Like I had to move it to the left in order to get the hexagon. Oh yeah, I had to reposition my panel too to get that one. Okay. And we'll have to do it for all of those for at least one more time. And then the bottom, when we do the bottoms, we'll have to slide the whole panel up to the top. Be brave, Jeff Lindbergh. Be brave. You can do it. <laughs> People are answering this question. I love it. And I wish that I could. I have a lot of sprees out. Cheryl, thank you for loving sprees. Now you know that you can all send me sprees. They'll be my favorite. <laughs> um, Citrus swirls are better. Dole whips. Ooh, Trisha. Wow. I know a place where you can get really good Dole whips. <laughs> Shannon, uh, what other, um, when you um, have made a career of being in um, the arts world, what, other, some, what are some other things that you've done? So, believe it or not, uh, I went to school for ceramics. Okay. So I used to teach people how to do the pottery wheel. And I did that for a very long time. I taught the pottery wheel. And in fact, I only stopped just after I had my first. And I kind of decided I wanted to do something. Um, I wanted to go into education. So I got a degree in special education. And I was a special education teacher for a little while as well. Okay. What, uh, what, what did you learn about yourself Um and kindness when it came to interacting with children with special needs. I enjoyed that job 
immensely. I love that job. Um, I found that I had a, a good amount of patience and, uh, and empathy. I could just really understand that these kids were somebody's baby and that they were very special. And, and I just was so excited to work with them every day. It was a, a wonderful job. And I, I look forward to the day when I do um, come back to it. Oh, that makes my heart happy. We need more of that type of story right now. How have you, how, as you think about um, being kind to yourself and protecting yourself, how have you been doing on consuming uh, intake of knowledge? And th for me, this isn't about a political question of fake news versus not fake news, but intake of data right now is kind of critical. Like we've got to have information, but it can also not be kind to your brain and your heart. What have you done as far as your intake of social media and news? Uh, well, um, I don't. I don't actually consume a lot of news. I, I'll read, I'll read articles at night before I go to bed. But I am. I would like to read more books. That's the definitely one of um, the things that are on my to do list. But I just. I've been having a hard time finding time to do that. And that's definitely something I would like to try to make more time for. So to catch everybody up to speed, I just over um, tapped on this mint and made a gradation that was a little too strong. So I'm going to try my best to hit it with mint only at the halfway point and see if I can reduce that gradation just a little bit because I overdid it. I'm only making it worse. It's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Okay, so that was only two on this color combo. And we are now moving to, are these our aquamarine and mermaid cove? Mm-hmm, that's right. And this is gonna hit where, let me see. Um, we're only doing one right now, right next to that green, okay? Yeah, this How's is the most complicated. Kel B says, Shannon, it takes a special person to work with special needs kids. So thank you. Um, I love it. That's so fantastic. I love that story. And I love that you're going to bring that back in your life. Yes. I just took some time off to be with my girls for a little bit because I was missing them real bad when I was working. <laughs> yeah. Tell us more about Piper and Everly. How did you come up with the names Piper and Everly? Um, Piper, well, when I was uh, teaching ceramics, we had a little girl who came in and her name was Piper and I just loved it. I thought it was the, the cutest name I ever heard and I knew this was before I was even actually before I was even pregnant. And I just knew that was was a contender. She hers was easy. Everly's was a lot harder. <laughs> I didn't know for a long time what her name was going to be. And we, um, I kind of heard I hate to, I hate to say this. <laughs> I found out that I heard that Channing Tatum's daughter was named Everly, and I just loved that name. I thought it was so pretty, even though I'm not necessarily like a big Channing Tatum fan. But <laughs> that's where I heard the name the first time, and I thought it was so cute, too. No, I totally understand it. I love it. Pop culture and details about that is definitely something that helps us, you know, know uh, what we want. You know, it provides us extra details, and I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter where you got it is in fact i think the universe gave you the name in a way it helped expose you to the name which is great people are loving this gradation which i love trudy okay. says that she came late but that's fine trudy the best part of the show is we don't take attendance because we know you can catch it in the in the rewatch so if you joined us late feel free to come on and enjoy the show in playbacks on youtube as you can see um Shannon is teaching me um, how to do gradation with the hexagon die cuts. And of course, Leah is putting it in the moderated comments to tell you how you can find them. Some of the items could be sold out, but don't forget waitlist to help you know when the product is back in line, uh, back online. All right, so that second um, C aquamarine color goes below the two greens. Great. It's sort of like a paint by number for me over here. actually stamp this <laughs> well we appreciate you doing our homework for us which was very helpful
So I will get some of this uh, second one going and then I will ask another question of the evening because it's already 740. Ay, ay, ay. Shannon, can they see this card made um, somewhere? Um, I made it originally for, uh, we're going to tweak it a little bit tonight, but it may, I made it a few weeks ago on, um, uh, my sweet Petunia's blog. So the maker of the Misty, I, I'm on their design team as well. And I made this card for them. Cause you can see the Misty is a very crucial critical. tool. <laughs> it's definitely critical. Uh, uh, remind me, aquamar aquamarine lighter. Wh what's the first one I stamp? That was tricky. Aqu aquamarine is lighter. Mermaid Cove is the darker. Okay, got it. Not there. I got to do it. This. Yeah, that will work. Thank you, Miss Turner. We appreciate the compliments. We are getting a lot of nice compliments about uh, how this is looking. This is all Shannon, everybody. This is just me following the chef. The chef says to do it, and that's what I'm doing. But it is looking pretty darn good. All right, let's move on to our next question. All right, the next question of the evening is, I think I've already asked this. Oh, no, this one is question number three. We're only halfway through. What is the kindest handmade item you've ever received? And um, I'll go first with this one. Uh, I definitely knew that when I started this craft community that people exchanged cards, but I didn't know that so many card makers, some of my favorite ones are actually watching the show tonight, including Sika, uh, many others, Holly, people have sent me cards. And I will tell you every single time getting a handmade card from people that are uh, in the craft community just moves me so much. Sometimes it actually makes me emotional because it's just... Uh, made with so much dedication. And um, I don't know, I've just always appreciated um, people's um, people's generosity when it comes to the art that they're making, especially through card making. So that's my answer. Miss Shannon, what do you have to say there? I bought a couple classes, well, ceramics classes, and I Yeah, someone says a king size quilt made by my mom. Wendy got her first card from Jennifer McGuire. Annalise says everything handmade is always special to me, especially items that are made by my kids. I will tell you that um, Shannon's uh, kids um, showed me their uh, stuff that they've made today. You've got some makers in your house. Uh, Marcy shares that a quilt that was made with fabric with my favorite animal on it, which if your avatar is an elephant, I bet the quilt had something to do with an elephant, Marcy. I, I bet I bet that's what it is. A hand-painted ornament, says uh, Miss Sullivan. My friend Carol Hodges says she's received handmade masks and much beloved handmade zippered pouches from great friends. Natalie, of course, from last week's episode and also a designer for uh, Pink Fresh says knitted blankets for my kids when they were born. Oh, that sounds fantastic. And of course, uh, we heard the beautiful story from uh, Leah to uh, commission painting from a well-known artist here in the Twin Cities for uh, young Layton when uh, the Lawsons were going through their life-changing event with their son. You can hear more about that story on the um, scrapbook.com. Uh, did a podcast and Leah talks about that beautiful gift. So that's great. Um, we have more issues with the split screen. Oh, Shannon, start talking. It was it was muted. Okay. That's probably why. The good news is, is that it's just been me rambling on when we we're in split screen, oh. everybody. Uh, a friend of mine had a pretty watercolored bookmark, which is fantastic. Great. Marcy agrees that it was elephants. Jenny joins us from Australia. That's fantastic. And Irish Mist says anything that her students give, which is fantastic. All right, let me get back to my desktop because my goodness, my professor has gotten uh, well ahead of me. I got to get going. So um, can you hold up your panel just so I can check my color blocks one more time? I'm getting ready to move into the blues, I think. So I'm doing the lighter blues first, and that is sky and summer. Got it. 
And let me see where they go one more. Okay, perfect. I'm I'm tr I'm tracking. You're doing great. We really only have like one more thing to do. So talk us through where we're going. Like what where are we bound for with this? So now that we've finished basically our panel, we could just leave it as this and put your sentiment on top. But like I said in the beginning, I cut those two hexagon panels. I'm going to stack them on top of each other and add a little dimension. But before I do that, I'm going to actually stamp on one of these with the outline stamp here that's part of the pop-out hexagon stamp set. So I'm going to get that ready. And I also wanted to include this because it's a, it's a, I'm going to show you kind of a trick to make sure you get this stamp lined up perfectly with your die cut. Ooh, I'm all about learning uh, tricks. So uh, let me get these blues done and I hope to join you and still land this plane on time. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this stamp off and I'm actually going to pop off all of the inside pieces. Pop those all out. I hope that um, everybody gets inspired to try these projects. I will say by doing this show, I've learned that it's super fun to take um, what the Pink Fresh designers are teaching me. And I hope that each of you do that as well, because there's nothing like having something that the designer made, but you're making as a hat tip to them. That's exactly why we do this, which is well, I don't think anybody's making what I'm making, but all right. So Seaside and Blue Jay, who's the darker and lighter there? The, I have to look again. Seaside is the lighter, Blue Jay the darker. Okay. okay. I hope that, I hope the boss is happy with how fast I've gone tonight. I, I, you know, you never want to be called to the teacher's office after work. <laughs> All right, seaside is lighter, so I'm going to hit that. Ooh, that's pretty dark. I hope I did that right. I'll put it I'm just. All right, I will say this is gorgeous. Gorgeous color decisions, my friend. Good grief. Oh, good. Okay. So um, I'm now caught up to you, my friend. Awesome. What next? So now you need your linear pop-out hexagon stamp. So like the frame one that's in that set. Okay. And you're going to need one of your panels. And I added some tape to the back side of the panel just a couple places we need to we want to kind of hold it in place inside our misty we have to be away from the corner just to make sure we get a good impression of this stamp oh I, I need I, we, we might I might break the rules and just turn the camera strictly on you uh, for this one so okay. let's let's uh, put it on you and say that one more time for the people at home so I put some tape on the back side, a tape runner. So I took a tape runner and just put some tape on the back side of the hexagon die cut. That way I can place it in the center more. I don't have to rely on the corner of the misty to make sure it stays put because it's taped down now. So it's going to stay put on me. Now, will this piece ever be seen on my card or is this simply a, the reason I ask is because I have a little ouchy. Um, oh. I, I don't know if you can see it on your Skype call, but a little ouchy. So if it's if it doesn't matter, then I'm okay. But if not, I need to make a decision. Well, you don't have to do this step. This is just going to add a like a line on the front panel. So you can totally skip this if you don't want to do this. Totally skip it. Girl, I'm I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Okay. <laughs> and I probably could have done it in the corner too. Well, we could do it in the corner if if you want to. I'm feeling see. I'm feeling so bold that I'm actually going to put the camera back on my desktop. I'm going to go for it, people. Okay. All right. So the the bottom. The... You can do it in the corner. That's fine too. So you don't even need the tape, really. Okay. But putting it directly onto my misty bottom. Okay. Oh, there's potential scam coming through. That's fantastic. So glad that you all got to see that. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought I turned that off. Okay. 
Um, I see what you're saying. We're basically just ensuring that this rubber, which of course is very malleable and uh, delicate, gets shaped a little nicer, right? At the end of the day, that's what I'm doing, right? Well, I was trying to you put the panel in the center, but we we because sometimes with rubber with background stamps, there's like a little border that on the stamp that kind of prevents you from having the image all the way to the corner of your panel. Okay. So to get kind of your panel completely covered, you sometimes have to move, take your paper panel and stamp away from the corner of the misty. But this actually doesn't, it actually totally doesn't matter. So what I was doing before with the tape, you didn't even have to do. So I'm sorry if that was confusing. That's okay. But you could just put your panel in the corner and then just use the, actually it even works better this way because you can use the well of the misty, the edge of the misty to get your edges all nice and straight. Okay. And you can see how, like if you, at this point you can see if, if your panel, if your stamp is not aligned well with your die cut panel, you can kind of just see, make sure that all those um, lines are kind of lined up with the die cut. Because it's hard to do it blind. It's hard to stamp this. Like the other way to do this would be to stamp this stamp first, just on a plain white cardstock, and then right. try to line up this die to it. Got and it. And that would be tricky. You're basically doing it blind. This is a much better way to get the stamp to line up perfectly with the die cut. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it does. It does. All right. I'm going to um, say that we're getting ready to use Rocky Slope, and I'm going to come back to me right. for a second. We are going to ask our fourth question. How do you start your day to set yourself up for success? So is there something for me? I'm an early riser. I have been since I turned 40. I'm in my sixth year of being 40. So I just turned 46. And ever since I downloaded iOS 40, I just have started to get up early. So 515 does not, is not painful to me. It is actually one of the best times of my life. Uh, it's me, Hazel Harper, a cup of coffee, sometimes out on the patio. And it's just centered with trying to be no phone um, and just coffee and her and myself. And um, it's super important. And then I would say walking with her um, is so awesome. And I just appreciate everybody's connection when I'm doing those walks with Hazel Harper. How about you, Shannon? What would you say is your... Um, uh, okay, really quick, because I'm catching an eye of what you're doing. I just stamp, I inked up the stamp with uh, Rocky Slope and then just stamped the panel. Oh, so we're stamping the panel, not the A2 that we just made. Nope, not the A2. That's right. Okay, good. You could stamp A2, but I'm, I stamped the panel because we're going to stack these panels just for a little bit of dimension. This is definitely just a little extra step. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, I, I don't do anything really. I definitely don't get up early. I wouldn't say I get up late, but I don't get up early. I can't make that claim, even though I like to get up early. Right. Uh, it's just I always start my morning with a cup of coffee. I like to take my morning kind of slow if I can. It's not I don't usually get that pleasure when when school's going on. <laughs> so sure, I sure. I I can fully appreciate that I um as a you know, a guy with no children, I can appreciate that that's not that's not the norm. I get it. Roberta has a good idea. She was saying she would just ink blend the die cut. That's one thing you could definitely do. That would be beautiful. All right, it almost it almost worked for me. Almost. <laughs> but it didn't work perfectly. But it definitely you can see if I was over just a little bit more, it would definitely do a nice I don't know if the camera would pick it up, but great. So now I'm going to double stack these. I can put I can put my Misty away, right? Mm -hmm. We're all done, except for the sentiment, which I did a early. I did ahead. Well, you, I guess you don't have to use a set, the Misty to make the sentiment, but I did. Great. So let me try to do that. Can you bring your card up a little bit so we can of see? Of course. So here is the panel that I stamped. It just adds a nice little detail, I think. Just really add something to the 
card, that little line. I like it. And I did stack the, those two die cuts up so that we have a little tiny bit of dimension. Because as our friend and fellow designer, Laura Fedora says, dimension is everything. <laughs> if Laura said it, then you do it. <laughs> yeah. Drop shadows are amazing, which is great. Take us home with your sentiment, if you don't mind, while I finish it up. And then we'll ask the last question uh, with both of us on camera. Sure. I'm going to real quick adhere this down. Just, I'm going to use liquid glue. You could use a tape runner. I, I, I like the, I always, I almost always use liquid glue when I can. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Don't have to get it everywhere on the back side of this panel, just mostly the edges and a few spots in the middle. Great. Me too. Okay, I think I got that done. Yeah, we love being able to um, get a little bit of liquid uh, glue playtime. You definitely get a minute to kind of... <laughs> All right. Friends, I will come back to that so you can see it, but you can see it on Shannon's screen there. Um, let me give you a full look of hers. Look at that. Oh, not only the drop shadow of the actual die cut, but then you add the gradation inside and you just have such a beautiful 3D card, which is fantastic. Well, my friend, um, can you show us where the sentiment might go? So I just, I just did some heat embossing in white on this gray cardstock, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of foam tape to the backside and just pop it up a little bit, and that will complete the card. That's fantastic. And of course, uh, we love that it celebrates the release that's currently in play. All right, uh, so let's get some of those answers up there for us. Uh, um, of course, Leah says that she gets up and does a little bit of work right out of the gate, and then she eats a healthy breakfast and do one hour long workout. I've definitely had a lot of meetings with Leah as she is either working out or she is heading to her workout. Uh, my buddy Daniel says a good breakfast. Uh, Natalie uh, says reading the Bible and connecting uh, with the word is fantastic. Um, D, you liked iOS 40. I always say that. I feel like we get birthday downloads, which is great. Trisha shares that she uh, does coffee in her favorite room and screen in her mm -hmm. screened in porch. Mm, I love that. That's Let's check back in with, um, let me try to get rid of that comment really quick. It'll go away in just two seconds. I want to get Miss um, Shannon back up on the screen. Shannon, look at that. Hold that up just a little bit higher for us, if you don't mind. Oh, gorgeous. And it looks so well. And uh, I mean, it works so well with that particular sentiment, which is good. That is the Hero Arts one, maybe? Yes, it is. That's great. Gosh, I love that. All right, moving on to our last question of the night. Can everybody tell my monitor is off to the left? I keep looking like I'm not looking at you guys. I'm sorry. What is your ultimate treat yourself splurge? What is something that you do in order to get yourself better aligned with yourself? Shannon, you get to answer this one. Actually, why don't you do this? I will cover for you. We'll get okay. you off camera and you can get the camera back on yourself for a second. So let's hear yours, friends. What are some things that are your ultimate treat yourself splurge uh, that you um, participate in? Um, I would say my ultimate treat myself splurge. Gosh, I have to think about that one. Let's see what you all have to say, first of all. What are some of your treat yourself splurges? Everyone loves um, the cards. It's great. Okay. All right, so Ms. Shannon is back with us. Great. Let me get us both up on the screen and let's get some of these answers. Craft supplies are, uh, so <laughs> a lot of people treat themselves to some craft supplies. Um, definite approval of tonight's card, Shannon. Good job, which is great. Okay. A paraffin wax, wax pedicure. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I'm going to say pedicure as well. I'm a dude who firmly believes in self-care, so uh, not having that in my life recently is something that's not been fun. I definitely would like that. More dudes should feel comfortable with pedicures. Does your husband, will your, is your husband like anti, like he would never do that? I don't think he, I think he would. I don't think he's, I think he would be okay with it. <laughs> he doesn't get caught up in that. That's good. I love, I love people that can understand self-care is self-care. 
Janet says she buys stamping stuff, which is great. A lot of, again, comments. And of course, we know Natalie. She buys her shoes. <laughs> she loves her shoes, that Natalie. Natalie, I'm still trying to make the card you tried to make me make last week. Bless your heart. All right, everybody. Shannon, I can't believe it, but we're actually out of time. It's 8 o'clock already, and people are going to want to move on with their lives. Did you have fun tonight? <laughs> I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much, Jeff. Awesome. You are a great educator. I can tell that you'd have this in your bones. Um, the artistic side meets educator side was very gentle and easy to understand what was going on. So thank you so much. I'm a huge fan, but just remind everybody where they can find you um, after tonight's show. I would love if you liked um, this card and you want to see more, I would love for you to check out my YouTube channel. Awesome. That would be awesome. And it's under your name, correct? So uh, you yeah. can find Shannon at the C-H-A-N-N-I-N. And I bet it pops up one of the first. And you can always connect through Pink Fresh Studios to find out more on Shannon. And of course, she's featured regularly as new releases come out. And just because, you know, the designers we all rotate through, you're going to be back on the show, I hope. I hope you'll say yes to coming back on the show. Absolutely. Awesome. I'd love to. Well, I can't wait to make another card with you. Shannon, have a great night, and uh, I will talk to you after the show. Sound good? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Friend. Thanks so much. Have a great night. All right, everybody. That is my friend, the lovely Shannon Peltier. It was so fun to spend another craft hour with you. Pink Fresh Studio brings us together every Monday night at 7 p.m., and it's a pleasure to be able to hang out with all of you. I agree, all of you. Everybody is raving about Shannon. She is sweet, and if you meet her in person, you're automatically connected to her positive energy, kindness, and big heart. And she is stunningly beautiful, by the way. Um, but all of those things, oh my gosh. And she makes beautiful cards, right? So I hope that she'll be back on the show. Hey, everybody, don't forget to join me next week, but also don't forget to be kind to yourself. You have to remember, we're going through a lot right now. And so as we take on everything that we're taking on, You've got to be gentle to yourself. So find a way this week to be kind to yourself, whether it's through craft products or just giving yourself a break, okay? Do it for me, but most importantly, do it for you. Have a great night, everybody, and we will see you next week for another craft hour and another designer. Be sure to follow me at Mr. Jeff Lindbergh and leave a comment. We, of course, will connect to all of your comments. It was a pleasure hanging out with y'all tonight. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you next week.